بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful Especially for the youth and youngsters, because it is summer holidays, you wanted to go outside. You wanted to play with your friends, but this is the tarbiyat, the upbringing of your parents, that today you could have been anywhere. But your parents have chosen that you sit where the zikr of Abba Abdullah of Hussein alayhi salatu wa salam is taking place. This is a blessing for us. And I have been saying this from John the Raad that understand how Allah Azzawajal has blessed us, how Allah Azzawajal has chosen us. 
that even the angels could have done the zikr of Abba Abdullah al-Hussein, but no, Allah has chosen you, the followers of Amir al-Mu'maneen, the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib, to sit and to commemorate and to remember Abba Abdullah al-Hussein. Any person who loves Ali Muhammad, any person who claims to love Ali Muhammad, needs to understand what is the mission of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Every single person who is a Muslim, who believes in Tawheed, who believes in Risadat, he is awaiting an Imam who will come and bring justice in this world. That person will be from the family of Rasulullah. He will be a successor of Rasulullah. His name will also be Muhammad and he will be known by Al-Mahdi. Ajjalallahu Faraju Sharif, come here with loud salawat please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Every single person is awaiting the 12th Imam. We, every single day, after every namaz, we say, Allahumma ajil le waliyak al-faraj. Ya Allah, hasan the reappearance of our 12th Imam. Every single day, every single day and after every namaz, we pray that may Allah send our 12th Imam so that this dunya, this world can be filled with justice again. This dunya can be filled with law and order according to the Sharia of Allah Azzawajal. This world can come to the door of Muhammad Mustafa and Al Mustafa alayhi salatu wasalam. With the coming of the 12th Imam, people will have a better understanding of Tawheed. People will have a better understanding of Risalat. And with the coming of the 12th Imam, all those people that doubt the Bilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib, when our 12th Imam comes, he will say to the world, remember Khadir, and say, Ashhadu Anna Amir al Mu'manina wa Imam al Muttaqina Ali Yun Baliullah. Our twelfth Imam will remind the world who Ali is, what is the Bilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The twelfth Imam will remind us. And even on that day, there will be some people that will follow him. But the majority of the people will refuse to believe in the 12th Imam. They will not follow him. How can we train our youngsters? How can we train our youth when Imam Mahdi Ajjalallahu Faraju Sharif comes and when he says Ana Mahdi I am Mahdi I am the son of Muhammad Mustafa I am the son of Ali Murtaza I am the son of Fatima Zahra Salamullah Alayha Come you have a loud salawat please Allahumma Salli ala Muhammad, Ali Muhammad. When the Imam comes and the Imam says this, how will we recognize that he is Al Mahdi? 
how will we know that he is our 12th Imam? And the only way we can understand who the 12th Imam is if we on a regular basis tell our children who the 12th Imam is. Yani just to do dua and just to teach the children dua Imam Zamana, just to teach the children to say Al Ajal, Al Ajal, Al Ajal, to teach them to do dua for the reappearance of the 12th Imam, but not to tell them who Imam Mahdi is, where he will come, what are the signs of the 12th Imam then how will they understand who the 12th Imam is? When the Imam comes, when the Imam arrives, he will be surrounded by the Noor of Allah He will be accompanied by angels. And how is it that practically we can get close to the 12th Imam? Every Friday, attend the Friday prayer and recite Dua Al Ahad. If you just read the translation of this Dua, you will understand who Imam Mahdi is. Try to read the translation of Dua Mudba. It is recommended that every Friday you recite Dua in Mujba. And that person that gets into the habit of reciting Dua in Mujba, he will have a better understanding of who the 12th Imam is. And we find in narration that that person who gets into the habit of reciting Dua in Mujba, Allah Azzawajal will open his mind and he will get the ma'rafat, yani he will get an understanding of who Imam Mahdi is. And regarding Dua Al-Ahad, we find in narrations that that person who after every Fajr Namaz recites Dua Al-Ahad for 40 nights, for 40 days he continues to recite this dua. Then we find in narrations that within 40 days he will have the ziyarat of the 12th Imam. Yani Imam al Zamana will come to meet him if he recites this dua with a clean heart. So we need to understand that. How in these 10 days of Muharram, yani how up to the day of Ashura, we can purify ourselves. Because any amal, any action in Islam, whether it is namaz, whether it is azadari Aba Abdullah Hussain, whether it is any action, any amal in Furuwadeen, Yani if you give zakat, if you give homes, if you go to hajj, if you do tawalla, if you do tabarra, if you do jihad, anything that you do, if you are not purified, yani if your heart and your mind are not clean, are not purified, then you will not get an understanding of what you are doing. Islam, the religion of Islam helps us both physically and spiritually. Yani Islam is not a religion that you just read, you follow and that's it. But Islam, as I said yesterday, it is a whole package. Islam, if implemented, will help you physically and it will also help you spiritually. Yani the religion of Islam will make your body strong and the zikr of Allah Muhammad and Ali Muhammad 
will make your soul stronger. Your body will become stronger and your soul will become stronger. And when both your body and your soul, they are purified, then you will get a better understanding of the religion of Islam. The month of Muharram, these days of the Azah of Abba Abdullah al Hussein, when we do Matam, when we remember Abba Abdullah al Hussein, when we do Zanjeer, we are purifying our bodies through the remembrance of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. When we cry for Abba Abdullah al Hussein, when tears flow from our eyes because of the remembrance of Abba Abdullah al Hussein, it is only this ibadat, crying for Imam Hussein, that when you cry for Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam, your body is purified and your soul is also purified. This is the only ibadat in the world that you get an understanding of your Lord through the remembrance of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. You will get closer to Allah through the remembrance of Mazalum Karbala. So Muharram is a month in which we are given time to purify our body and our soul and to realign our priorities according to Allah, His Prophet and Ali Muhammad. Take these 10 days, these lectures have been arranged so that you can connect with Allah Azawajal. And before we move any further, we need to understand what purification is. Because if we do not understand what purification is, what the harat is, then we cannot make use of purification. Purification literally refers to a certain right in the external worship of Allah Azawajal. Taharat is when you clean your body physically. Yani we mentioned this, I think it was the second majalis that we discussed what are the adab of attending the majlis of Abba Abdullah Hussain. And in that we mentioned that you have to be clean, your clothes have to be clean, because you don't want to sit in the, sit in the majlis of Abba Abdullah Hussain and the person next to you feels discomfort because you are not clean. So any ibadat first brings us to the platform of Tahara. And for those kids that are under 12, for you it is easier because you still have your parents who still clean you. But for those youngsters and youth who have now grown up, it is your responsibility that when you become of age, to make sure that your clothes are clean, to make sure that your body is pure, to make sure that you are clean in every sense and not for your parents to keep reminding you because cleanliness is half of religion. Yani you should get into the habit of always staying clean, always wearing clean clothes. And if you are not clean and if you are not pure physically or spiritually, then you will not get a proper understanding of the religion of Islam. And inshallah, in the coming days, we will discuss in more detail 
in regards to how to purify yourself physically and spiritually. But before we can continue to that, we need to understand why it is important in Islam to make sure that your tongue is pure. I recited in front of you from Surah Rahman in which Allah Azzawajal is saying in Surah Rahman, Allah says that I am the beneficent Allah, Ar-Rahman. Allah says that I am the beneficent Allah, Allam al-Qur'an. I have taught you the Qur'an. Allah is saying that He created man. And then the most important thing, Allah created man, then Allah says, And I taught you the mode of expression, yani I taught you how to speak. Look how important it is when Allah is talking about the creation of insan. Halak al-insan, straight after creating man, Allah says the first thing that I taught him was the expression of speech. How to express yourself. This proves how important this tongue is. If your tongue is not purified, if your tongue is not clean, if your guftar and your speaking and your habits are not clean, then no matter what you do, you will not understand what is Islam. The Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa The Holy Prophet says, among all things, the tongue deserves to be prisoned longer than anything else because most of the sins are committed by the tongue. Yani we discuss these in one of the majalis, those five diseases that destroy the soul. Those diseases that move you away from Allah Azzawajal. Those diseases that finish purification from you. You no longer be purified if you continue to sin. And the Holy Prophet says that this tongue that we have, this is the main cause of us moving away from Allah. Yani this tongue we use for what? Backbiting. This tongue we use for telling lies. This tongue is used for defaming someone. This tongue is used for mocking someone. This tongue is used for insulting someone. Everything is done through this tongue. Yani we have a saying, do not judge a book by its cover. When a person comes to you and he sees that you are well dressed, well behaved, you appear good, you are nice and clean, you smell nice, but the moment you open your mouth, he knows that you are not a good person. Why? Because the way you speak, the way you talk to other people defines who you are and what sort of a person you are. That is why Amir al-Mu'maneen Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib Imam Ali says, do contemplate before speaking. Yani, in simple words, think before you speak so that you may guard yourself from committing errors.
This is how important it is that we control this tongue. And in another narration, the Holy Prophet says that the strike of the tongue is severe than the strike of the sword. This is how important it is for us to know how to use this tongue. Because it is this tongue that can be used to praise Allah Azawajal. And it is this tongue that we use to do those things that move us away from Allah Azawajal. And this is why Imam Bakr says, No one is saved from sins. No one is safe from sins unless he learns how to control his tongue. Allah mentions that after creating insan, he gave us the ability to speak. And Ali Muhammad teaches that before we can get onto the level of purification, before we can get onto the level of understanding Deen, Islam, on the level of before we can understand Risalat and Bilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib, we need to learn how to control this tongue. And it is through the stories of Ali Muhammad through their lives that we can learn something on how to control this tongue. In the time of Imam Zain al Abadin Imam Sajjad was one day at home. And the only reason why I'm telling you this is so that we can learn from the kirdar and the akhlaq and the morals of A'imma والسلام, and we can understand how A'imma والسلام, used this ni'mat yani this tongue is a gift from God Imam was at home one day and the person came knocked on the door of Imam Mezlin Labadeen and when the Imam opened the door he started to curse and to insult Imam Sajjad Imam Sajjad stood and listened to this person. He carried on against Imam Sajjad and when he became tired, he left. Imam Sajjad did not get angry. Imam Sajjad closed the door, returned back inside where his companions were sitting and every single companion said to Imam Sajjad or oh, Imam why did you not reply to this person? Why did you not say anything? Why did you not respond to his insults? Imam Sajjad gave us all the lessons. Imam Sajjad says, at this moment in time, this person is angry. And we discussed that one of the diseases of the soul is anger. Imam says that now this person is angry. He will not understand anything that I will tell him. Lihaza, I remain quiet and listen to him. So that I can reply when the time is right. Every companion said, Mola, no, you should have replied. Mola, no, you should have replied. Mola, Imam Sajjad, after a while, got up and went to the house of this person. And when the Imam arrived and knocked on the door of this person, he looked at Imam Sajjad and he became scared. Because at that time he was angry, but at this moment in time he is at home. He probably realizes that his family is with him. But he did not understand who Ali Muhammad is. Because if he would have understood who Ali Muhammad was, then he wouldn't have been frightened. But he was scared. He thought that the Imam came to get revenge. He thought that the Imam now came 
to insult him. But when the Imam looked at this person, Imam Sajjad says to this person, O oh person, whatever you said in regards to me, I need dua to Allah Azza wa Jalla. That if what you said is true, then may Allah give me the ability to change it. And if what you have said is a lie and you have tried to defame me and accuse me of things that I have not done, then I do to dua, I do dua to Allah, may Allah give you hidayat. This person heard that the Imam is still doing dua for me. As soon as he heard this, he began to cry. He said, Ya Zainul Abideen, I heard many wrong things about you. I heard that you had moved away from the teachings of Muhammad and Mustafa. I had heard that you do not implement the teachings of Mustafa. But O oh, son of Muhammad and Mustafa, I was mistaken. I do Tawbah, I ask Allah for forgiveness. O oh, Imam, show me the path that takes me towards Allah. And we have many stories like this. The famous one that you've all heard of when a person came from Sham. And when he arrived on the outskirts of Medina, he was met by Imam Hassan wasalam, And Imam Hassan helped this person. And whilst Imam Hassan was helping this person, this person started to insult Amir al Mu'manin and Ibn Abi Talib. He started, Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He started to insult Imam Ali. He started to insult Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein because he had been living in such a society and with such people and with such khulafa that taught them against Ali Mustafa. Imam Hassan could have taught him and told him straight away that I am Hassan. Hussein is my brother and Ali is my father. But no, Imam Hassan through the teachings of Muhammad and Mustafa used the tongue that Allah gave him to preach to him and through his kirdar, through his akhlaq, help this person. And whilst the Imam was helping him, the Imam says to him, Oh traveler, you have come from far away. If you are thirsty, I will give you water. If you are hungry, I will give you food. If you want a place to stay, then I will give you my house to stay. Upon hearing this, this person says to Imam Hassan, Oh person, you do not know me. I do not know you. But oh person, tell me who you are. Because it seems like that you are from a great and noble when he heard this, Imam Hassan looked at this person and Imam Hassan says, Ana Hassan ibn Ali. I am Hassan, the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. As soon as this person heard that the people that I have been bad mouthing about, the people that I have been insulting, that Hassan is helping me, guiding me, not insulting me in return. He fell to the feet of Imam Hassan and he said, Ya Mawla, I ask Allah to forgive me and I want you to show me what Sirat al Mustafim is. This is the problem that we have in society. We are not taught how to use this term. You know, we have hands. We have legs, we have a mind. Every parent tries to teach their children how to become better in this dunya. But the reality is that even though you are teaching your children to be successful in this dunya, 
And let me repeat this, there is no harm in making sure that your children are successful in this dunya. So bear in mind that this dunya is temporary. What is it that you are teaching your children that will help them not only in this dunya but the hereafter? To teach your children akhlaq, to teach your children how to use this tongue, that is the best sadqa jariya for any parent. If you teach your children how to recite the Quran, if you teach your children how to recite namaz, how to recite munajat, then every time they open the Quran and recite the Quran, you will get the sawab. Every time they recite munajat with this tongue, and when they do the zikr of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, you will get the sawab. This is the reason why Anjaman Ulamani Aulad Zahra Salamullah Aleha is spending all of its time and energy to try to train the youth and the youngsters of tomorrow who will take this mission of Azadari and Mazlume Karbala, this mission of Milayat Amir al muminin forward on how to sit and how to speak according to the teachings of Ali Muhammad. This is how important it is. And when we look at the lives of Ali Muhammad, when we look at how Ali Muhammad والسلام, taught their children because at the end of the day when we come to the majalis or when we listen to the zikr of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad the youngsters that, that attend they want to learn something from those children who was present in Karbala yani I have mentioned many times Ali Akbar was in Karbala, 18 years of age. Sayyida Sabina, salamullah alayha, four-year-old child of Hussein. Ali Asghar, six-month-old child of Hussein. Qasim alayhi salatu wa salam, son of Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba was present in Karbala. But today, 5th of Muharram, I would like to mention two brothers and how we can learn from their tarbiyat, how can we learn from their lives, and look at what understanding of the religion of Islam these two shaksiyat personalities had. And if we teach our children the lives of Hazrat On and Hazrat Muhammad, yani the sons of Sayyida Sayyidab Salamullah. Hazrat On in Karbala was 13 years old, and Hazrat Muhammad was 11. 13 and 11, same age of many of the youth that we have here today. You know, when we say to a 13-year-old recite namaz, he turns around and says, well, I'm not old enough. Or when you tell their parents, teach your children namaz, they say, oh, there is many times they are not old enough. Look at the age of Hazrat On, he was 13 in Karbala. Hazrat Muhammad was 11 in Karbala, but look at the tarbiyat of these two. According to the teachings of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, that when Hussein alayhi salatu was salam, when Mazlum Karbala decided to leave Medina for Karbala, when Mawla decided to leave these two, On and Muhammad, were ready to accompany their uncle, Aba Abdullah al Look at the jasba, look at the tarbiyat. That they wanted to accompany their uncle, knowing that their uncle is going to Karbala. He's leaving everyone behind. 
but they wanted to accompany their uncle because of the tarbiyat of Ja'far and Ali ibn Abi Talib. Never think that your children are too young to learn Islam. Because if that was the case, what about Ali Akbar? What about Hazrat Qasim? What about Muhammad and Ibrahim, the sons of Muslim Ibn Aqid? Hazrat On and Muhammad, the sons of Sayyidina Zainab, accompanied this caravan and when they arrived in Karbala, these days they are passing very quickly. Today is the fifth and soon it will be Shab e Ashur, the eve of 10th of Muharram. Momineen, today I want to discuss the musibat of these two children. On the eve of Ashura, every single mother in Karbala, every single mother was holding their children and not saying to their children that tomorrow you will be killed or tomorrow try to save your life or try to run away but every single mother in Karbala was holding on to their child and saying oh my child I want you to be the first to sacrifice yourself for Abba Abdullah I want you to sacrifice yourself first for Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Every mother was saying this to their children. We see in the tent of Sayyida Zainab, Sayyida Zainab is sitting with On and Muhammad. And she is saying to On and Muhammad, Oh On and Muhammad, you know that I love my brother dearly and I want you to be the first to sacrifice yourself for the sons of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. On and Muhammad, look at the tarbiyat of these two children. They are looking at each other and they are saying to each other, I want to be the first one to be sacrificed for Hussein. I want to be the first to be sacrificed for Hussein. Allah said, the time came when these two children wanted to leave, when these two children wanted to get permission, uh, when every single person on the day of Ashura, when bodies started to come back to the tents of Abba Abdullah Hussein, Sayyida Zainab comes to her sons and she says, Oh sons, people are dying, they are sacrificing themselves for Abba Abdullah Hussein. Oh my sons, On and Muhammad, why is it that you are still here? On and Muhammad, look at the mother Zainab and they say, Oh our mother, every time we have gone to our uncle Hussein, our uncle Hussein is not giving us permission to fight. Sayyida Zainab says, Oh On and Muhammad, go call your uncle Hussein. Hussein comes to the tent of Sayyida Zainab. Sayyida Zainab begins to cry and she looks at Hussein and she says, she looks at Hussein and she says, Oh Hussein, have I not treated you like a mother? Have I not loved you like a mother? Imam Hussein says, Oh Zainab, you have loved me like a mother and I love and respect you a lot. Sayyida Zainab, listen to this tragedy. How is it that a sister says to a brother that I want you to give permission for my sons to be sacrificed? How did Imam Hussein hear this? Sayyida Zainab begins to cry and she says, Oh Abba Abdullah al Hussein, you give permission to my sons. I want my sons to be sacrificed on your behalf. Allah sir, Imam Hussein gives permission. These two, On and Muhammad, were trained by Abbas. When they left, they killed many kuffar. 
they killed many tyrants, but a time came on Khan Oon and Muhammad that when they were attacked from all sides, Umar ibn Sa'ad, may Allah's lahnat be upon him, he says, these are the sons of Jafar and Ali and Murtaza. If you want to kill them, then separate these two brothers. Oon and Muhammad was separated. When they were separated, the enemy attacked Oon and Muhammad from all sides. When these brothers were attacked and when they left the horse and they were coming to the ground, they said, Our salam be upon our uncle Hussein. Assalamu alayka, ya Aba Abdullah. When Imam Hussein heard that Oon and Muhammad had fallen, both Hussein and Abbas rushed to the battlefield. And that is the reason why we cry, Imam Hussein and Abbas carried these bodies back to the tents of Sayyidah Zainab. Sayyidah Zainab, when she heard she was a mother, but she did not cry for On and Muhammad. When she saw that her sons have been killed for Hussein, she did sajda and she said, Oh Allah, accept my sacrifice for Hussein. Accept my sacrifice for the religion of Islam. And that are our last words and the musibah of Sayyidah Zainab. She did not cry in Karbala for Oon and Muhammad. She did not cry in Kufa for Oon and Muhammad. She did not cry in Sham for Oon and Muhammad. But when did Sayyidah Zainab cry for Oon and Muhammad? When Zainab returned to Medina and when she entered her house, she saw the cradles of Oon and Muhammad. When she saw the clothes of Oon and Muhammad, she begins to cry and she says, Oh my son, Oon and Muhammad, may I be sacrificed for you. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, Ya Allah. For the sake of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, Ya Allah, make our children learn from the seerat of Ali Muhammad. Ya Allah, forgive our sins and the sins of our forefathers. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, behak zikr al Hussein, accept our du'as. All those people that are helping Anjuman Ghulaman Aulad Zahra Salamullah Aleha in any way, whether they are providing food, water, whether they are helping in any capability, Ya Allah, for the sake of the seeker of Imam Hussein, bless them all and give them all an understanding of Muslim Karbala. Ya Allah, give our women the ability to implement on the teachings of Sayyidah Zainab. Give our mothers the ability to teach our children how to love Aba Abdullah Hussein. Give our children the ability to do the Azadari of Aba Abdullah. Give our children the ability to stick to the Vilayat of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ya Allah, hasan the reappearance of our 12th Imam. Allahumma ajil ya waliye kal faraj. Allahumma ajil ya waliye kal faraj. Allahumma ajil ya waliye kal faraj. Matme Hussain.